initiatives of D. Saravanan has turned a, a, a barren land into a forest area. Most of the common forest trees which have been grown are Coromandel, Ebony, Ironwood and Flame Lily. Now this region has become one of the major landmarks and was one of the projects which was started by Aerovilla in 1994. The project has been uh, grown going with an idea of growing indigenous forests in the regions of India, Sri Lanka and Indonesia. The land topography has been challenging and the idea was to bring water into arrest in these regions and collect indigenous seeds to have this mission get completed. The next is uh, born in Germany where we have the UN's mid-year climate change conference which was held in the month of June. The idea was to understand the climate change and its impact on the surroundings. So the loss and damage finance and adaptation uh, has been one of the major ideas. In Indian Ocean huge amount of plastics has been found mainly through the paint material and the pet bottles which is the polythene terephthalate. Uh, we have covered a separate lecture onto it and and we have also understood why this is harmful if you want to keep alcoholic drinks into it because it actually have a very high differential permeability rate rate the next is the sunga street in indonesia has become a pollution hotspot in terms of heat the temperatures are rising germany and spain uh, the temperature rose by more than 10 degree than usually which is recorded. Uh, the Great Dying event has been seen where the North Atlantic right whales have migrated more than 1000 kilometers to Gulf of St. Lawrence because of the climate change. There have been a huge impact on the oxygen which is being produced by the ocean organisms. 30% uh, of the carbon dioxide emissions are absorbed by the oceans which is impacted. 20% of the sea floor uh, has been unexplored and still we have seen that since uh, oceans are one of the great carbon sinks, without ocean, the global temperature would rise up to 56 degrees Celsius. So maintaining uh, the, the, the flora and the fauna in the oceans is extremely important. The next is hot water. So it is believed that greenhouse gases, 90% of the excess heat generated through them is absorbed by the oceans. 14% of the coral reefs have been lost, which impacts uh, a great impact on the coral bleaching 50 percent increase in the marine heat waves have been witnessed we have covered heat waves as a separate topic and heat dome again as a separate topic uh, also we have seen that the deep sea mining if it is allowed uh, it would have a high impact onto the ocean life and the ocean continent so the ocean biodiversity is actually being affected if we divide the oceans into photic and aphotic zone photic is the zone where photosynthesis is possible and phytoplanktons are Present, but the deep sea below the photic area is the aphotic zone which is basically a intermediary zone also known as a twilight zone uh, between the two zones and then finally you have the aphotic zone now aphotic zone is further divided down into the bethypelagic and the midnight zone uh, you bethypelagic midnight zone or the abyss zone uh, so you have the various layers and finally the deepest layer which is hedopelagic deep sea mining where a lot of polymetallic cell not use hydrothermal winds uh, are ferromagnetic materials have been identified the material which are rich in rare metals uh, cobalt magnesium zinc have been identified and the mining of that has been going tremendously now India's jute economy has been affected the production has been constantly impacting and uh, the industries have been falling despite the fact that India is one of the largest producers of jute. India's export contribution is just 7% in contrast to 75% from Bangladesh. Together with Bangladesh, we have nearly 98% of the output that is there. But uh, the mills in India have not been uh, good and not have been productive. There had been a job loss of more than 60,000 people and uh, of the 20 mills, 10 have been forced to close down so only 8 to 10 operational units as of now are there also this cash crop the production has been falling the government subsidies are not there and as a result there is no good future which can be witnessed if we talk about in terms of production we can see blue line indicates india's production which is declining but on the other hand the red line shows bangladesh production which is increasing significantly similarly if we talk about area harvested under the jute cultivation the area in the bangladesh is growing in contrast 
to India. Now, definitely the subsidy given by government is one of the major reasons. Again, important reason is the lower tariff, good power tariffs and cash subsidies with better fiber quality. Now, again, important thing is uh, rating is one of the main things which has to be done with jute. Uh, rating is done in a water nearly 30 centimeters below it and that is done in freshwater resources. Now, uh, usually India, the river water and the freshwater resources is missing and therefore there is another important impact which is seen on this. The next is genetic undoing. Now, inbreeding is definitely harmful. If we have a lot of inbreeding, the mutations are uh, within the species and that leads to what is called as the inbreeding depression and the next generations cannot survive and they are more prone to diseases. So as a result, uh, one of the species, uh, the damaged uh, mutations are to be removed through natural selection. That means allow new species or external species to be in the uh, in the existing species. This method is known as perching. However, sometimes we have to introduce a completely new species and this species is known as a genetic rescue species in order to preserve the local population. Now, in India, the population of tigers is increasing significantly, but in a, a huge study, we have seen that, let's say in the region of Ranthambore, uh, there has been a lot of inbreeding. Because of the inbreeding, there are very, uh, uh, very less capability to survive and reproduce through the next generations. And they are in isolated clusters. Initially, because of urbanization, their uh, genetic diversity is restricted to a region and therefore they are more prone to diseases and a higher rate of inbreeding is seen which increases the issues of vulnerability in the uh, species like tiger. Now tiger is not just one of the species but there are similar other species that are uh, affected by it and therefore we talk about the any effect which is the effective population size uh, uh, has been affected uh, in the region. So these losses are mainly because of the mutations. We have to introduce new genes and uh, new gene revival are important. A good example is the pink pigeons in uh, Mauritius. Those have been revived. Uh, the bottleneck was between the 1970s and the 1990s where this was brought into a critically endangered species and then rescuer species were brought in and there were uh, better developments that have been seen. If now we have seen food security as another important issue that needs to be addressed. It is believed that 70 nations of the world so far in the last two months have witnessed some form of uh, violence because of rising inflation and the rising food prices. Youth have been started to participate uh, highly into it mainly because of the Ukraine-Russia crisis and then we have the, uh, the extreme weather events because of climate change. This has become a bargaining problem and we have been witnessing that it's not just one area but numerous other areas which have been affected. Uh, extreme weather conditions have led to drought impacts in the regions of East Africa, the regions of Ethiopia and the surrounding regions. Watermelon is one of the unique species and it is one of the underutilized fruits. The green covering is actually one of the ways to protect it from the arid climate. However, it is not uh, utilized in the arid climate. There are various ways through which watermelon is used. Uh, the, the region is used for creating vegetable curry. Uh, it is also used for creating peta similar to uh, the, the Agra style peta. And then you have the Kalingada dosa which actually involves watermelon, coconut and uh, the, the rice. Uh, you see the fermentation has brought in uh, various impacts. It is believed that uh, watermelon rind is one of the major sources of vitamins, carotenoids, ascorbic acid, uh, mainly vitamin C, potassium, minerals, and then antioxidants, amino acids that help body to repair, lycopene which improves the eye and the hear, ear health. Uh, you have copper, zinc, manganese, potassium, and various levels of vitamin A, B, C which are found here. So domestication of watermelon has a unique history the origin has been cited in South Africa uh, in the regions of Cape Town originally and then it has been brought and classified er uh, erroneously by the American scientist in 1930. Uh, the archaeological remains have been found from Northeast Africa as well around 5000 years ago. The next is bioescoutics. Now this is a, a tool to track the, uh, the, uh, the fauna diversity that exists and the, uh, the threat for extinction. Uh, we have 
have also seen how some birds and other species have been related to it. The installation uh, steps, the retrieval, pre-processing, processing analysis and the underwater sounds have been identified. So the complete process has been mentioned here. There is another uh, important thing about the chemical factory explosion that took place in the Iluru district. Now Iluru also important for the for the uh, Aluri Sitaraman Raju, a separate class has been taken recently where the cricket stadium has been built in his name. Now this village, there was an explosion on the chemical factory and uh, it was originally basically a sugar mill which got converted into a chemical factory and uh, various chemicals have been processed. There has been a lot of black sooth pollution in the nearby areas. Material safety data sheet has to be uh, produced which talks about uh, how the chemicals are transferred transported, handled and the way forward for it. Uh, the TRIPS waiver and trade negotiations regarding COVID-19 vaccine, again a very important topic that we had discussed so far. Uh, the small fisheries now has a good edge because uh, we have seen a resolution on fishery subsidy and that is mainly to, uh, to actually weed out the illegal unregul unregulated and unreported fishery and the fishers with mechanized boat contribute to nearly 80% of the marine resources and that needs to be addressed. As we mentioned, La Nina is one of the important impacts that have led to East African drought history. Uh, the regions in the Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia have witnessed the worst droughts in 70 years in the last uh, few, uh, last two years and nearly 7 million livestock have died, 20 million people are facing extreme hunger. Uh, there have been impacts which have been seen because of La Nina. The temperatures have been constantly rising globally and uh, Ethiopia is one of the worst hit countries. Uh, we have another body which is Fuse Nest under the UN agency which is responsible uh, to work in the famine areas of East and West Africa and uh, climate hazard centers have been established at UC uh, Santa Barbara, the University of California Santa Barbara to understand the world's most drought prone areas in East Africa. Some of the other important news talks about China's ban on new steel cooking cooking and oil refineries uh, to lower the pollution. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, we have the Aranya forest uh, uh, issues and the coal mining which has been discussed. Uh, in Gujarat, lumpy skin disease has been identified which is a viral outbreak in the animals and numerous animals have been died. Dying because of it, the vaccination has been started. Uh, in the forest fire in the Kinnor district in Himachal Pradesh, Chilgoza pine had been uh, worst affected and the exports for the Chilgoza have been affected because of it. The country uh, is also uh, ranked among the third in terms of internal displacement because of disasters after China and Philippines. So definitely in India, we need to focus on why there are so much internal displacements because of of climate related or disasters, climate induced disasters. Uh, also Nepal has shifted its base camp of Everest due to uh, the rapid rate of melting of the Kumbu glacier in the regions of Nepal and Australia's new Prime Minister has set an ambitious goal of reducing the carbon emissions by 43% uh, in the next 10 years. So those are some of the important topics that we have discussed for this uh, edition of Down to Earth. Uh, all the Down to Earth summary is available available on Examry's current affairs section. So the handouts for the same would be available there and definitely we are bringing the summaries every month. So stay tuned for further updates from our side. Have a wonderful day ahead.